I haven't eaten the whole day, and now you're sitting in front of me eating burgers. I'm getting hungry. No, 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 keep it, keep it, enjoy it. Mr. Danny Trio! Can you eat some help there, Dan? Don't eat the hand, that's no food. I'm sorry, don't bother my screen. For all the girls I know. <laughs> Questions, go ahead, I'll answer for them. <laughs> what do we got? Right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the middle of either. Uh, I read a lot about Steven Seagal being a quite challenging character on set. Um, how was it to kill him on Machete? Do <laughs> you want me to answer that as me or Tom Savini or... As you like. Oh, uh, what was the question? Was it fun to work with him or is he that, ch is he that annoying character? Uh, people, a person on set. Steven Seagal. Kind of how was it to work with him? Yeah, as well. How long did I work on that character? No, uh, how was it to work with Steven Seagal? Steven Seagal was great. Yeah. So, he's a pro and uh, he actually yeah. taught us all how to sword fight. Yeah. <laughs> he was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he probably was. Uh, another question. Ask a friend one, I'll answer. So, uh, Mr. Williamson, I got a question for you. How was it to star in a movie in Glorious Bastards? Well, uh, they used to call me uh, the Hammer. Yeah, so I had sex with you. Yeah, so I had played ball. Yeah, so Clinton said to you, you had no sexual. And I'm a tough guy. So, don't want me. Okay, whatever. <laughs> the best thing we shot in Rome, Italy. So that that's a good beginning from the start. Rome is a, a great place to work. Uh, as a matter of fact, after I finished the movie, I stayed there for 10 years. So I made about 25 movies in Rome, Italy, after doing uh, In Glorious Masters. Uh, Black Coke. He yeah, had the original, pre Quentin. Did uh, several Black Cobras, 1990 Bronx Warriors, The New Barbarians. I did a whole slew of films in Italy. My favorite place. Thank you. <laughs> Don't eat the bird. No. So, questions from the audience. No one. There's so much people and nobody wants to ask me questions. I have to ask questions myself. So, here. Hello. Hi. Um, Danny, you have such beautiful hair. What's your secret? <laughs> But so everything. Okay, my question goes to Mr. Sovini. That's you. Um, it's about Terramania. I for myself work for uh, one of Germany's biggest haunted house and horror show and I just love it because you can totally freak out what's it to you um, to, to make this new whole project to Armenia and how did this idea come up? I can't understand. <laughs> Ask me out here. Okay, again, <laughs> Terramania. What's it to you, this whole project, this haunted house, and how did this idea come out? Oh, my haunted house? Oh, uh, we have a 
done it in two years, but for eight years we had Terra Mania. And it's the guy who tools them. I think somebody pissed off the dog, he smelled the meat. Is there a dog in the <laughs> Give it a bone. Give it a bone. So it's to me, I give the dog a bone. Okay. The, the, the guy who owns my school put up the money to start the haunted house. And I've done them all over the world, but uh, this was the best in Pittsburgh. But we don't, we don't do anything. Is that what you, is that what you asked me? It's like, no, what did you ask me? <laughs> I'll answer. You know what? For Tom, it really means a lot because he gets to like, you know, interact with his fans and you know, and you know, it's like he, you know, he, he walks by and he scares them and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> You know what? I have never had so much fun at one of these uh, as I have this time here in Germany. I mean, you guys have been great. All of you. Uh, any other question? I got one for Tito. Uh, uh, Tito, when are you? Where, where are you guys playing next? Uh, we're going to be doing a little, uh, this deal. we're going to be doing a little some stuff in Austin, Texas, so all of you are invited, uh, anybody that wants to, like, you know, I'll get you tickets, Austin, Texas. <laughs> So uh, when the movie from Dust Till Dawn came out, uh, it was a movie when you were going to a cinema. The first half of it, it was like a typical action road movie, and then it um, became this vampire thing. Um, when you... You are listening, right? Don't play with the toys. <laughs> So how did you get involved in the project? When did you get the first draft of the script? And what was the idea behind it? Well, the, the best way to see the movie was not to know that there's vampires in it, right? Because then when someone hype changes, it's a big surprise. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Uh, somebody asked me, Daniel, how did you prepare for that? I looked at him and said, how the hell are you prepared to be a vampire? I just, I just you know, I got into a lot of makeup and got scary. But I, I told you, you know, my, uh, I was a single parent at the time. And my, I took my uh, six-year-old daughter and my seven-and-a-half-year-old son. They went, they loved it. And, uh, my daughter especially liked the part where my eyes went in the pool pockets. She was very quiet until they killed me and my eyes went in the pool pockets. And all of a sudden, my daughter jumped up and went, Yeah! <laughs> I'm writing a book on parenting. The first time I saw the movie, I went and I sued Quentin. I sued Quentin because they left me off the credits. It was supposed to have been full starring. And I got no credit on the film. No credit in advertising. So I sued Quentin and I sued the studio. That's how much I love the movie. <laughs> and he's buying everybody dinner here tonight. <laughs> Free beer. <laughs> you win the fight. <laughs> I was uh, working with Robert on mixing the music for Desperado 
and we were in the studio of the Warner Brothers lot, and uh, he always, Robert Rodriguez always has guitars when he's working. And we took a little break, and I was playing a song, and he turned to me and he said, what is that? I said, it's a song I wrote about a vampire in 1981. And he said, let me videotape it because I'm working on a movie with Quentin about a vampire. It's just a coincidence. And he videotaped me singing the song. And he called me that night and he said, you're going to be in the movie. I wrote a scene with Salma and a snake dancing to that song, blah, 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 get ready. And that's how that happened. Then he sent me the script, and I thought he sent me the wrong script. Because I was reading it, and I thought, there's no vampires. <laughs> then halfway through the script, I thought, I lost some pages. <laughs> but that's how I got involved. Tito had the absolute best line in the movie. Good night! <laughs> <laughs> As the first <laughs> <laughs> Sabini? Yes. Hi. I would like to ask you if, when you had been a little boy, if you wanted to become as a profession what you are now, and in case you dreamt of something else, what made you change your mind? Uh, I don't think he's become professional yet. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Absolutely, yes. When I was 11 years old, that's all I wanted to do was makeup. Uh, I shined shoes on the street to buy makeup uh, or to buy a mask. And you know what? Uh, but you know, everybody. A lot of successful people that I know today had the passion when they were children. Robert, Robert Rodriguez used to take his school book in, in grade school, elementary school, turn it sideways and draw a cartoon character. On the next page he would draw a cartoon character. By the end of the day, he had a flip animation movie going on in the border of his book. He was making movies in grade school, you know, so that's a passion that, 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 that was the same with me. I just thought of nothing else. You become what you think about all day long. And that's, that's passion for 